first tournament on the Corel WTA Tour, and she is now number one after this tournament. Serving with new balls. has to play to win against Martina Hingis. And she's, she's only managed to win three points in the last 18. Look at this flick of the racket just to get this back in the air. Make your opponent hit an extra ball. That one did get out of reach. I was interested before this match started, and I never saw the match in Oakland, Pan, to wonder whether she was going to be able to, Monica was going to be able to attack the serve of, uh, of, uh, of Hingis. She hasn't been able to yet. And if she keeps serving like that, she's not going to be able to. Well, she's serving 80%, and she has not it lost a point that. when she's gotten in the first serve. I mean, that's spectacular. And occasionally, sure, Celis has taken advantage of the second serve, but there are not many of them coming down, but still, 15-30. And they're well-placed. I mean, everyone has a thought process, serving out wide on both sides on the last two points. 30 all. approach and that one for a clean winner now break point for Celis. Well, Monica waiting for the wide serve at the beginning of the point was able to get on top in the rally in a perfect up the line backhand. But see again mixing up the serve the last time on the ad side she served out wide very well that time up the tee making Monica have to move to play the return. But it's, a, it's a matter of first strike, isn't it? And what's happening is that Hingis is getting first strike. And Monica does not move well or react well if she is the one where the opponent is dictating. That's terrific stuff. She is looking invincible. Martina Hingis for so long. Her mother said to her, I don't want you to serve too hard because your young body is really not going to be sufficiently strong to handle it. But... Watch now. We've been talking about the serve, and this is the most improved shot of Martina Hingis, and perhaps why she is becoming number one. It used to be vulnerable even on the first mm -hmm. serve, but off the ground, she's getting much more body weight behind it, falling into the court. Meantime, her opponent, for about the third or fourth time, tossing the ball up and catching it. Oh. And you know what, Pam? I think there's room for more improvement in, in uh, Hingis' serve. I think in another year or two, she'll be serving at 10% harder. Yep. Out. Well, Hingis coming up with a smile, and I'm telling you what, Monica's probably thinking, you know, she's playing a drop shot off my serve. I mean, that's kind of like a smart alecky thing to do, but she's 16 and a half, and Hingis has a very confident, almost arrogant way about herself. Most number ones do. Uh, of course, uh, she's only 16. There's a certain naivete that also she gets asked all these questions. And then she'll come up with answers that are as honest as the day as young as far as she's concerned, but they sound arrogant. 15 all. Third double fault. Monica needs this game. She was up love 30 the last game on Hingis' serve. Even after Monica won that point, she kind of went back to shaking her head a little bit. She knows she's in deep trouble trying to figure out a way to get into this match. 30-15. That was a good first serve for Monica, but it was an awkward return. It was low and wide, and Monica is not comfortable moving forward, and she tried to go for a little bit too much. Ellis's first ace of the day and her 17th for the tournament. Game point. Oh. 
Now that comes from pressing. That comes from knowing your opponent anticipates well and you try and go for something a little bit too much and you're a little uneasy. Monica always used to be so definite as to where she was going and how. Solid point in, another game point for Silas. I think that's a good play to serve Hingas out that. wide. Get her out of court and then bang one into the open court. That's one way to gain the upper hand in the rally. Double fault. She has almost a sense of hopelessness about it. I feel it watching her play, and it's very surprising to me because I'm so used to seeing Monica Sills in control of a match. The only other time I've seen her like this was against Hingus. It may have been one other time, but it was on grass courts, and that's a surface that Monica is a long way from being comfortable on. The finals of Wimbledon against Groff a few years back, she lost like two and one. This is a very unusual scene right now. Sellers holds on. She is a breakdown in the second set. She lost the first set, and in the first set was only able to hold on one time. This is the tennis center at Grandin Park. It's a public facility, and it hosts this great Lipton Championships. American works 50.5 hours a week, puts in 336 hours of carpool, spends 182 hours doing yard work, and walks the family pet 730 times. If you're going to work that hard, shouldn't your vacation? Call for a free visitor guide and information on our $104 St. Petersburg Clearwater Bush Gardens vacation package, and let your money work hard too. This is the Lipton Championships that you have tuned in to watch, and I'm very glad that you did. Martina Hingis and Monica Sellis, it couldn't be a better matchup in the final, could it? But Hingis is w playing very well. Take me out to the ball game. Tuesday, ESPN features an opening day special. White Sox and the Blue Jays at 1 p.m., the Cubs and the Marlins at 4 p.m., and then the defending world champion Yankees and the Mariners, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Baseball Tuesday, ESPN, and I know you have something to say about that, fan. <laughs> Well, of course, at 3 o'clock on Tuesday, I'll be at Camden Yards. Orioles open up. That's why I'm wearing my orange and black today in honor of my Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> Two games to one, Hingis. First set to Hingis. Hingis to serve. She's got a break in the second. Well, that was the serve the other day that was hit for the ace at the end of the Novotna match. Fifteen all. Now, 15 all usually isn't that big a point, but right now, Monica Sells needs to get two in a row. She does a great job here hitting into the open court. She can get a 15-30 advantage on the serve. It would be big for her. You know, Pam, you brought it up, and I'm watching the statistics now. She gets another first serve in. She's up at the 80, 90 percent bracket in uh, 81 percent and 91 for, for the uh, set. It's just terrific. <laughs> sort of cheeky, isn't it? Let's take a look at the match update as of now. The number's looking very solid for Hingis. Well, there you have the service numbers, 81%, not enough second serves for Sellis to attack. Winners and unforced errors, both Hingis leading in those, 
categories. Very clean match, only five unforced errors. Game. And ace. It's three games to one now, Hingis, with the break. 6-2. It has been a great championship here. She will be the number one player in the world come Monday, regardless of the outcome of this or any other match. First lift and final since 91 for Monica Sella. Sanchez Vicario out early. And the first lift and final without Stephanie Grant for a while. She was beaten uh, by Jennifer Capriati all those years ago, but she was a multiple winner of this tournament. Defeated Shanda Rubin last year and Miko Date the year before. Another double fault for Monica Sellis. This is uncharacteristic. Five already. Pam, uh, what is the status? Excuse me. What's the status of Steffi Groff? What are we talking about here? Well, she's her, her knee is getting better. She's going to be starting in the clay court season in Europe in just a few weeks. It'll be great when she comes back and is healthy, and if Monica keeps improving. Three of them going for number one, as you said, Cliff. 30, 30. Oh, that was. A fortunate shot for Monica Sells. Very few easy balls as Hingis missed today. You always like to get some free points from your opponent, but it's very stingy going right now from Hingis. Ooh. Third heel. Well, you like to see Monica come into net, but coming off a shoot-top volley, trying to play a little drop one back. That's a very tough volley, even for someone who's comfortable up there. There you go. Miss hits. Very seldom you hear that clunk of the racket of Martina Hingis. Game point, Sellers. A fight for every game for Monica Sellers. Monica Sell is having trouble winning points on the ad side. She keeps winning the deuce points. Perfectly played off forehand from Hingis. Net court did not do Monica Sells any favors at all. And now a huge break point against her for two breaks. Yeah, this would be the second break in the second set, so there's a lot riding on this one. There the break goes to the young Swiss Miss, and she has the second break. Four games to one. Celis is searching for an answer, but it is very elusive this afternoon. There's downtown Miami. Impressive, isn't it? Yes, another morning, another trip to the office. But in the Mercedes E-Class, you're in one of the safest cars on the road. inside a protective cage with front airbags and, get this, side airbags. Heaven knows there are animals on these roads. roll into Scottsdale to take on Desert Mountain in the first major of the season. Jack looks to defend his title against the best of the senior PGA Tour. The tradition presented by Countrywide. First round coverage Thursday at 4 on ESPN. So you take a look at the scoreline there. Martina Hingis first set 6-2. Monica Sell is able to hold only one serve. She's only held one serve here in the second set. She's almost shell-shocked by the game. 
of Hingis, isn't she? Well, she is. She, she broke Hingis once, early goings, but she, she's not reading the pattern of the Hingis serve well. Martina Hingis loves to serve out wide on the deuce side, and Monica is not stepping over and ready for that because once Hingis hits that wide serve, Monica's out there hitting her two-handed backhand. She can't get back into court, and Hingis is having easy goings hitting to the open court. Monica has to be thinking about the patterns that are coming from Hingis. Monica is playing on her heels, and she is seeing very few opportunities to attack the serve because, as we've been pointing out to you, Hingis's first serve percentages are so high that she seldom sees a second serve. There's Monica's career, 80 tournaments, her record 317 and 39. Look at that winning percentage, 38 titles, 48% of the time, almost half of the tournament she's entered, she's won. Which makes it more amazing to see her so completely overwhelmed by somebody so young. 15 love Hingis. Now let's not forget that uh, there was a time there for a couple of years when she won just about every Grand Slam that she entered as well. When she was the number one player in the world, she was that far away out in front of Steffi Graf that it looked like Graf would never catch her. remember from years ago when she was number one in the world but she still comes up with big returns she's going to need a lot more today she just goes for the line and lands just an inch or so inside well there was a an attempt again at the so same kind of thing and as you said and that's the kind of shot that i thought was going to be able to take its toll on hingis's serve but she hasn't hit enough of those 30 all here comes a second serve. And now that was a second serve return that was forceful and two shots later. Sellis wins the point. Looks like Hingis' name might be starting to be chiseled pulled onto that Waterford crystal. Breakback points to at least get one of the two breakback points. Wasn't it always Monica Sellers who was the toughest in a crunch? And isn't it different now? Dangerous. Oh, oh she got away with it. She shouldn't have. Sellers was there in plenty of time. The ball was way high enough for her to hit it just about anywhere. She tried for too much because Sellers kept herself right there at the net. Watch this. Well, this is what you do when you play someone who's on a roll, who's playing the best tennis in the world. You just go for too much too often instead of playing your normal shots. That's what people used to do against Steffi Graf all the time, Monica Seles, Martina. on you know i saw that result from the last match that they played out in california and i saw six two club i said that can't be right something must have been wrong maybe sellers was feeling bad or was one. injured or something where she wasn't she just soundly beaten and there's hingis's mom taking a look and enjoying every stroke of this match but now i see how it happened well just that last point monica sellers played a perfect point would have won the point against 99 percent of the players Hingis got to that last one, played the perfect defensive lob, landing within a foot of the baseline. I think Sellers was just frustrated and overhit the overhead. 5-1 Hingis. And then, of course, nothing goes so way. 
That one could have been a clean winner. Clips the top of the tape. Could have bounced over. Bounces back on her side. Love 15. 20 unforced errors from Stella. And as important, that's where the young Swiss Martina Hing is so few compared. Oh! Love 13. Well, it really is almost an exact replay. That's the sixth double fault of what happened just five months ago in Oakland, California. She is exasperated, Monica Sellers. And again, as you said earlier, Pam, Love that's just an effort of trying to go for too much too soon because you're up against somebody who is so dominant at the, at the time. This is match and championship point. sort of anticlimactic as Martina Hingis makes it look almost too easy it's one thing in Oakland California it's another thing in a tier one championship match as Martina Hingis rolls out to an easy win three breaks of serve in the first set and Monica Sellers was only able to hold serve once in the second set 6-2 6-1 the young miss who is going to be the number one player in the world on Monday when the official WTA Tour rankings come out. But let me make it clear. She was going to be number one whether she had won a first round match at this championship or not. That is one happy young lady. She is the Tiger Woods of women's tennis. She has dominated women's tennis. And she has still not lost a match in 1997. Hats off. And congratulations to Martina Hingis. We'll talk to her after this. The best tennis players in the world play on the ATP Tour. And like all great competitors, they disagree on just about everything. Which tournaments to play, surfaces, line calls, playing style, even which language to argue in. But there is one thing they do agree on. The ball, the Penn ATP Tour ball, bringing harmony to professional tennis. How much younger do you want to look? You decide when you get rid of gray gradually with Grecian Formula 16. Day by day, Grecian brings back natural looking color. Lose some gray or all of it. Gradual Grecian lets you decide. Man, what a shame. Yeah, still three months left on this guarantee. The Wilson Pro Staff Extreme. Guaranteed durability for 10 months. What? The Dominator, Martina Hingis, 6-2, 1 over Monica Seller. She got three out of four first serves in in this match. She made only seven unforced errors, and she, the winner, is with Pam Shriver. Tough stuff. Down to you, Pam. Thanks, Cliff. Well, Martina Hingis, I never knew what it was like to play a perfect match, but tell me, what is it like? Well, it's not too bad. I mean, uh, I just can't say I like Monica's game. It just has to hit the ball even harder than she did, it, than she does already. And I like her game. And I mean, I played a perfect match today against her again, and I'm very happy about the victory. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you all have seen history today. Martina Hingis becomes the youngest ever number one player in the world. And Martina, you would have become number one regardless of how you did here at Lipton, but it must be a lot nicer becoming number one with a win here at the Lipton. That's right. Um, when I first came to the tournament, I knew if I lose first set or first match, I'm going to be number one anyway, but I just kind of have this responsibility to also win this tournament. That makes it even nicer, and I did it, and I'm very happy about it. 
Do you think you really are old enough to really appreciate what it means to be number one? <laughs> well, I mean, Monica wasn't so much older when she became number one, so I <laughs> just, I mean, just keep going. <laughs> well, really, congratulations on a great job, and good luck the rest of the way. Let's go back up to Cliff. Pam, thanks very much. You know, that's exactly right when you think about it. That's a nice comment from her. You know, Monica Sellers wasn't that much older when she became number one. So what she's saying is, what's the big deal? Well, it is a big deal. She's so young and she's number one. Well, let's go back down to Pam now. Who's with Monica Sellers? Pam, back down to you. It's to me one of the most popular tennis players of all time, Monica Sellers. Great, great response from the crowd. I know you feel badly, but what can you do against an opponent that never misses? Well, first, I have to congratulate Martina. Just awesome match, uh, awesome year, and congratulations on becoming number one, too. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, there's not much what I can say. She, she beat me again very easily. I'm sorry I couldn't give you at least a little bit of a longer match out here today. Uh, I did my best, but uh, that's about it. <laughs> Let's go for a long interview, Monica. Uh, no, Monica. Uh, what do you need to do? Look, it was four and a half months off, first tournament of the year, still a great result through to the finals, but you must have some things in your mind that you know you can work on to get back to another level or two higher. Well. <laughs> the crowd loves you. Thank you, so kind. Um, well, obviously, getting to the finals is very exciting. Um, I did my best today, and Martina was just better. Um, I need to play some more tournaments, and that's what I'm going to try to do, and be a little bit more consistent, be injury-free, and that's about it. Well, look, we're excited to see you back on the tour. Good luck the rest of the, of the year. Two great champions, two number ones. Back to you, Cliff. Thanks a lot, Pam. You can't help but love them both, can you? That's really well said by both players, actually. And that is one great champion, former number one in the world, Monica Sellis. But there is the new number one. And her name is Martina Hingis. She is 16 years old. She's going to be playing for a lot longer. You will be seeing a lot more of her, and she'll bring you a lot more pleasure. Congratulations, Martina. Tina Hingis has apparently broken the code on Monica Sellis' game, and more importantly, she has the game to make it work. They've played twice, and Sellis has only been able to win five games in all from Martina Hingis. Live coverage tomorrow on ESPN. Men's singles, Thomas Muster takes on Sergi Bruguera. Now, Bruguera played a terrific match in the semifinal against Pete Sampras. That, by the way, will be at 1 o'clock live on ESPN tomorrow. Best of five sets. In the semifinal, Patrick McEnroe and I call it. In the third set, three games to two. Let's pick it up. This is live coverage of the Lipton Championships that you're watching. 3-2 Bruguera with a breaker serve in the third set. Up next, the Players' Championship. And if you tuned in to watch that, please stay tuned. This is live coverage of tennis. We'll finish this and then...